Hey, everyone. Welcome to Fox 10 Talks, a Wednesday edition. I'm Brian Webb with Trenton Hooker here. We have our whole team joining us back there. If you'd like to join us on YouTube, we'd love to hear your thoughts. And you might like this one. If you like space and you like aliens, strap and that's your in. thing, yeah. strap them in because this could mm-hmm. get bumpy. Yes. Um, but it's it's always such a fun topic to, to go there. And they have us sitting closer together maybe because yeah. we, can, we can— Despite what our human resources director wants— <laughs> We're still here. We're still doing six, it. The six We're still feet talking. Thing is gone. It's gone. Yeah, those days have passed. Uh, so we are talking about there's a new baby planet being formed outside of our solar system. Yes. And it's uh, unique in many ways. Um, and I think one of the ways is that it is being surrounded by a disk of gas and dust. And these things aren't often seen, but probably are out there a lot more than we know. And it has an Arizona connection. The U of A is big with all things space. And I yeah. think one of the, one or more of their telescopes was used. Right. And just the research here, I mean, it's way above our pay grade, but sure. the... Uh, just, just so fascinating that we're able to see some of this and and get the data and and really get a little bit of a peek on what's going out in just unbelievable areas of the universe right now. But let's bring in our guest, uh, University of Arizona professor Laird Close. Professor, thanks for joining us on Fox Ten Talks. Can you tell us about the findings with this planet? Yeah, sure. Well, that was. You know, a pretty good introduction there. Uh, <laughs> so we're pretty excited. We're, you know, everybody knows that, you know, we, we have planets like Jupiter, big gas giants, but we don't know very much about how they form. Uh, we know they get huge, but we don't know that process very well. So we've been hunting our team, and that's great. You've got the photo up there, has been hunting for signs of these, uh, well, basically baby planets growing baby planets. So the purple dot that you see on the screen there, um, that purple dot is an actual picture, an actual photo of a giant planet that's actually growing. And these are extremely rare. And this is the only one that we've ever been able to find that's actually clearing an area around um, the disk of uh, dust and gas. So you can sort of see that ring around the star. It looks a little bit like Saturn's ring, mm. but it's it's a ring around a star. And, and that planet, that big purple planet, has carved out a big gap in that ring. And, and even though we sort of think that that's what should be going on in systems like this, this was a completely new and exciting discovery. Ah, uh, so Professor, so if I'm Hearing you right or thinking through this right. So in, in theory, that planet might have been part of the ring at some point, coalesced with another enough mass that it uh, kind of shot off and then now orbits on its own, something like that? Yeah, I mean, the way that we sort of understand it, and, and actually to be clear, it's it's a mystery. We, we don't have all the things figured out, but the sort of idea is that um, the over time material falls onto the planet uh, once it gets to be about, you know, maybe 20 Earths in mass, and then it, it starts to rapidly accrete gas and dust onto it, and, and it grows very quickly in mass. Uh, and in that process, it removes all the material in um, that's around the star in that region, in that orbital region. It will basically suck all the material onto it, all the gas and dust, clear a dark lane. If you look really carefully, you can see out to the far right, there's another um, dust um, uh, part of the disk. Mm. And it's, you can see the purple dot has carved out darkness all around it because it's a growing planet. Uh, you know, it needs food, it needs its gas, it needs its hydrogen gas to grow. And so that's what we're actually seeing uh, for the first time. And and there's also an artist's illustration here that's sometimes up that's showing um, how that material falls onto the star, onto the planet. And as it falls onto the planet, it gets super hot. When it gets super hot, because as you know, when things fall from outer space on to the earth, they get really hot. The same process kind of goes on with the gas and we can see that heat. And that's how we can tell that there's actually a plasma 
on the surface of the planet. So there's sort of this wild ring of superheated gas, this sort of plasma ring around this planet, which really makes them some of the most interesting things in the whole universe. And this is the first time we've ever seen one clearing its own gap. So it's an exciting discovery and it's made all with technology that was built here in Arizona. Mm. It's a very sophisticated, it's probably the world's most sophisticated camera in many ways. And we use it in Chile, um, but it was built at the University of Arizona campus, obviously here in Arizona. And so it's a very exciting, um, it's kind of a local story and, yeah. and that, that makes it super fun. Professor Close, can you tell us a little bit more about your team? Now, you're, you're working on multiple continents together to you know, build this, to put it together, to bring the data, and then obviously look at what you found out there. But can you talk about the coordination? And uh, am I wrong that there was also a European uh, team? Yes, as part yeah. Of this? So, so uh, science is, is massively collaborative these days, and uh, we work closely uh, we built the instrument here in Arizona. We use it on a telescope that uh, Arizona, the uh, state of Arizona owns 10% of down in the beautiful Atacama Desert of Chile. And then um, at the same time, we were alerted. The disc itself was the ring that you can see was discovered uh, by my friends and Leiden Observatory. Um, and uh, they alerted us to this. And then uh, this in, that's in the Netherlands. Uh, and then they alerted us to it. And then we went and used our fancy camera to see if we could see um, signs of accreting planets, growing planets, uh, like that purple dot that you see um, around that ring. Because they were like, this ring is amazing. Uh, you know, maybe there's something carving out the disk. And sure enough, we, we were able to find that. And so it was kind of exciting. It, it, I, I'll admit, it doesn't often work out quite so um, cleanly. But yeah, we basically just discovered this in April wow. and already the publications are out and it's all very exciting. So this was a very quick turnaround. Professor, can I throw a few questions at you? And forgive me, I just want to get them off my head before I forget. Uh, first of all, is this is outside of our solar system. A, is it part of another solar system or just wandering that's, out there by itself. That's that's right, Brian. It's uh, it's a completely different um, alien solar system. This alien solar system is different from our solar system. It's it's much bigger. Um, like that planet we were looking at is about 56 times the Earth-Sun uh, separation. So like our own Jupiter is only about five times that. So it's sort of like 10 times wider than our solar system. Um, and it's probably... Uh, the planets are much more massive. That planet is probably about five times the mass of Jupiter. So it's it's a super Jovian planet. Um, and, and that's sort of why we were able to see it, because it's, it's actually hard to, to find, to actually directly photograph planets in other solar systems. It's, uh, it's tricky, uh, very small angles, because they're very far away. It's about 500 light years away. So that's what the planet looked 500 years ago. Right. Um, but I'm sure it more or less looks the same today. And if Trent doesn't mind, a couple of quick ones. Why why do planets form gassy versus rocky? And why you've been wanting to ask that one since the third grade, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Finally, I, I'm, I'm like a third grader again. Yeah, yeah, I love this. Love it. Why gas versus rocky? Do we know? And why do there even? Why doesn't the sun just chew up all of the uh, rocks floating? Or why do there need to be planets? Why is that right. part of the process of forming why do they even need to be there why do we need to be here why are we here <laughs> well i mean to be honest with you we, we still planet formation is still a great mystery but um luckily for us uh nature does like to make planets um we we only account for a very very small amount of the total mass in a solar system most of the mass as you say is in a star but even with a little bit of mass left over you can make some pretty big planets and we know that Wispit 2, which is the name of that purple planet that you were showing, uh, we know that Wispit 2b is, is gaseous because we can see the hydrogen gas falling onto it. Um, we can, and, and through that process, we can estimate its mass. And, and we know its mass is about five times Jupiter. And so we know that it's covered uh, in a thick gaseous atmosphere. A rocky planet would be super exciting, but those that's that technology is actually probably not really possible with today's uh, telescopes. We have to wait to the next generation of telescopes that we're working on at, uh, in the state of Arizona and uh, hopefully going to deploy 
in the 2030s uh, in Chile, actually just at the site right beside the telescope that we used for this image, uh, the Magellan uh, Observatory. Oh, well, that's uh, exciting. Well, Professor Close, real quick, uh, we've got a couple minutes left, but can you can you talk to us just about what are the implications uh, for this discovery with our solar system? Because, right, 4.5 billion years ago, our solar system began just like a, a disk. Yeah, yeah, no, such a great question. So the reason why I think these are this is such exciting science is this is sort of like this. This system is probably about five million years old. So what what the way to think about it is this is what our solar system would have looked like when it was a thousand times younger than it is today, uh, and and so we probably had rings around our sun. Uh, I mean, we sort of have an asteroid belt now, but they would have been big, bright rings like we see around the Wispet two system, and uh, we would have seen. Um, just like we see these giant planets like Wispet 2b carving arcs, I bet that's what our solar system would have looked like as uh, you have massive planets like Jupiter probably also made a gap, a dark gap in our solar system's original ring. And it tells us something about the way the solar system forms. It tells us something about the way the water got moved around in the solar system. Uh, these giant planets, they can scatter water in uh, towards the sun, which can deliver water to planets like the Earth, uh, which is, of course, we know is really important for life. So there is a there is a component to this research that helps us understand the architecture, if you will, of, of other solar systems that help us better understand how the architecture of our own solar system would have looked when it was a thousand times younger. Doctor, uh, Professor, we have one minute. Uh, what's What are you going to look for next? <laughs> well, um, you know, I think it would be exciting to the, the ultimate thing uh, before I retire. <laughs> I'd love to be able to do the same work that we're doing now. Come back on your show and talk about rocky planets mm -hmm. and looking at um, uh, signs of life uh, in reflected light off rocky planets. But that that will be a that's a big time project. It's going to take a giant Magellan telescope, which we're working on right now. Um, and that won't see first light till about the 20, early 2030s, but that's, that's going to be the really big, exciting story. That's going to be the next exciting big story. Good stuff. Oh, man, we're all for it. Yeah. Well, Professor Laird Close, we're not going to move from this desk, so we'll be here waiting for you <laughs> on that discovery. Uh, we'll break it on Fox 10 Talks. <laughs> but thank you for your time, sir. Really thank appreciate you, sir. it. Keep okay. Keep us a good work. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, thank Brian. You. Thank Bye. you, sir. Have a good afternoon.